There was tremendous um, loss of Former job. British mental health worker turned stay-at-home mom, June Ross, was vacuuming her rug one day in 2004 when something unexpected happened. I heard a very distinct voice, I'm going to feed you with manna. And I thought, manna, where did I hear that from? And actually I remembered the story of the children of Israel when they left Egypt and God made provisions with the manna. All her life, June had read the Bible. She was a pastor's daughter and had been raised in the church. She knew from studying the scriptures that God spoke to people through dreams and visions. His very announcement of his birth came through a dream. June says God told her to prepare for a worldwide economic event four years in the future. She would be needed to help feed people. I heard the Lord start to say, people are gonna be losing their jobs. They won't be able to afford to feed their families. I thought, okay, God, I don't know how this is gonna be done, but I'll just be obedient. Three weeks later, June had a vivid dream with images of a crown, a purple piece of fabric, and food moving rapidly. I dreamt I was standing in front of a supermarket. This time I had a crown on my head and like a purple robe and my hands was outstretched. And as I looked in my hands, food was coming out at a very phenomenal rate. I didn't understand that either, but that dream again was very profound. The dream was so stirring that June purchased a little tiara and purple fabric to symbolize the images she saw and put them in a box for safekeeping. Because of the dream and the vision, June went out and asked local retailers questions about their unsold food. I said, what do you do with your surplus food? And um, they basically said, oh, we throw it away. And I thought, oh, well, you know, I would like to come and collect it. With some volunteers, I can put everything in place, contracts and everything else. And they were fine. It was just amazing. They were very welcoming because obviously retailers don't want to throw away their food. They, they realized that, you know, it could go to better use. For the next two years, June's home became the hub of food distribution to the needy in her local community. It literally started with about maybe 10 volunteers and it started from my home. I would have volunteers helping me to go to the supermarkets, bringing all these crates. I mean, there was no space in the house. There was crates on the stairs, crates in the kitchen. It was just jam-packed. Soon, June named and registered her charity, Esther Community Enterprise. Word got around and to the point, it was nearly over 4,000 people in and out, in and out, coming into my home. The poor is God's heart. When we kind of look at Jesus' ministry, it was always with the, those people that didn't have any high regards in society. Then in 2008, just like in June's vision, a global financial crisis and recession hit. There was tremendous um, loss of jobs. There was a lot of people literally didn't have anything to eat. So everything, what he showed me, literally came to pass. We started having people coming to join different churches, organizations, can we be affiliated? As they came and joined us, the food was distributed in the different communities. By late 2008, Esther Community Enterprise was feeding 17,000 people a month. It was like in the Bible when the Israelites collected manna in the wilderness every morning. June's volunteers quickly got the surplus food to the hungry before the sell date. An amazing team, army of volunteers. By then there was about 300 amazing people. They sacrificed their time, um, their finances. And so the volunteers really are the, the main core of what we actually do. June says the most wonderful time for her and her volunteers was the special packages made at Christmas. We're up till two, three o'clock in the morning and families are waiting for their little parcels to come through and the tears. Um, there's no words for that because um, everybody needs to eat. No one should be feeling hungry. Um, so when you actually knock at the door, you see these children getting so excited. Oh, mommy, look, it's here. It's worth it. By 2011, June's journey to feed hungry people in the UK landed her at one of the most famous addresses in the world, Buckingham Palace. It was just such a beautiful experience going through the palace and out into the gardens. June, representing Esther Community Enterprise, was honored with the Queen's Award for Voluntary Service 
The MBE Honor is the highest award given to voluntary groups in the United Kingdom. There was a certificate given, um, signed by the Queen herself. What was nice was the fact that part of it said that we bestow favour, which is what the journey that Esther went on when she received favour from the King. In my instance, I received it from the Queen. Even the award itself looked like the images and colours from her dream seven years earlier. I just thought, is this for real? Is this really happening? And to see how God brings the pieces together of our lives, even when we don't understand what he's doing, he has a way of, of bringing things together. Today, Esther Community Enterprise serves approximately 25,000 needy people per month all over the UK with quality food. I'm privileged that God could ask me to do this. It's all about servanthood. That should be our heart. We are called as servants.